All right, good morning. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 38 through 41 is where we're going to be this week. And I encourage you to uh, read it for yourself sometime today uh, so that you can get it in your heart and in your mind. But the Bible says, And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot, and seethe pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered thereof wild gourds his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat thereof. But he, Elisha, said, Then bring meal. And he cast it into the pot, and he said, Pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. What a great story. Just a few short verses, but we can learn a lot. And we're going to look at these verses and what we can learn from this story this week. Well, in today's story, we have the worst chef in the Bible, the worst cook in the Bible. In fact, his cooking was a disaster. He nearly poisoned all the students in Elisha's school of the prophets, or, or we could say a Bible college. In this story, Elisha had gone to the city of Gilgal, where there was a school or a guild of the prophets, and Elisha held classes for them. Again, it was sort of a preacher's conference, a ministerial seminar uh, in a Bible college. While he was teaching, the kitchen help was working on dinner, and they decided to prepare a large kettle of vegetable stew. One of the men went out to look for vegetables. He found a delectable uh, looking gourd, so they invented a dish we would call gourd goulash or goulash. Unfortunately, the gourd turned out to be highly poisonous, and it must have also been bitter tasting. When the famished students sat down to eat, they spewed it out of their mouths like so many geysers going off at once. Perhaps some of the men who ate a few bites had violent cramps or other bad reactions, which I'll not describe. The men cried out, O man of God, there is death in the pot. Elisha decided this was a good occasion for a miracle. So he called for some flour, which he tossed into the pot like a secret ingredient and stirred it into the mixture. And suddenly po poison porridge became succulent stew, a blue ribbon dish worthy of the Food Network very possibly the best tasting soup ever, perfectly seasoned without a hint of bitterness or poison. Now there are several lessons here. And like all of Elisha's wondrous works, this wasn't just a miracle, but a sign. It had meaning and significance. It underlined and illustrated the teaching that Elisha was no doubt imparting in his messages to these prophets attending this particular school and conference. You know, the message of Baal looks attractive, but it's poison to the mind and soul. The message of the world today looks attractive, but it's poison to the mind and soul. The job of the preacher, he was teaching them, is to teach and preach the true message, to stir God's truth and his grace into the melting pot of society so that healing and nourishment can satisfy the hungry soul. But on a simple human level, there's another lesson, which is obvious and practical and relevant. And I'll end with that today. The observable truth to this story is that God not only forgives sins, but he redeems our mistakes. We confess our sins to him and he forgives them. But in the same way, we can admit our mistakes and he transforms them with a liberal handful of his amazing grace. This cook, we call the worst cook in the Bible, just about killed some people. But God took that mistake and transformed it with a liberal handful of his amazing grace. And he can do that in our life as well. Father, thank you for this day. 
Thank you for this story, for the things we can learn through this story. Thank you for your grace in our lives. Use us today for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll have more tomorrow. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. The Lord bless you.